challenges we face. And ASEAN has an important role in the, on the global stage, where geopolitical divides threaten to trigger new conflicts while making old ones more difficult to resolve. As I told yesterday's summit meeting, we must avoid at all costs the division of the global economy into two parts, led by the two biggest economies, the United States and China. Such a rift with two different sets of rules, two dominant currencies, two internets, and two conflicting strategies on artificial intelligence would undermine the world's capacity to respond to the dramatic challenges we face. ASEAN members are particularly well placed to help bridge this divide. We must have one global economy, one global market with access for all. Yesterday's meeting was an opportunity for a valuable exchange with ASEAN leaders on issues including Myanmar, the war in Ukraine, the global energy and food crisis, as well as the climate emergency that confronts us all. The situation in Myanmar is an unending nightmare for the people of the country and a threat to peace and security across the region. Indiscriminate attacks on civilians are horrendous and heartbreaking. I urge the authorities of Myanmar to listen to their people, release political prisoners, and get the democratic transition back on track immediately. That is the only way to stability and peace. ASEAN has taken a principled approach through the five-point consensus. I urge all countries, including ASEAN members, to seek a unified strategy towards Myanmar centered on the needs and aspirations of the country's people. I reiterate my call for urgent action by the Myanmar authorities to create conditions for the voluntary return of almost one million Rohingya refugees. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I have just come from the COP27 climate summit in Egypt and I'm going to the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia. These two meetings are crucial to the ASEAN region and ASEAN member states are essential to the multilateral solutions that must emerge from these two meetings. First, the climate talks. The largest economies have the greatest responsibility to cut emissions and keep rising temperatures within the 1.5 degrees limit of the Paris Agreement. But every country has a part to play. And I'm calling for an historic pact, a climate solidarity pact, between developed and emerging economies, and the biggest ones will be in Bali, under which they would combine resources and capacities for the benefit of all to rescue our planet. They need to be united in order to defeat climate change. Developed countries must lead the effort to get to net zero emissions. But the only way to prevent our climate from catastrophic overheating is for a climate solidarity pact under which rich countries, multilateral development banks and technological companies provide support to emerging economies to enable them to speed their transition to renewable energy. And I commend ASEAN member states that are showing the way through just energy transition partnerships like Indonesia and Vietnam. Five ASEAN member states are in the top 20 countries most impacted by extreme weather events in the past two decades. I'm urging leaders at COP27 to reach agreement on a financial mechanism to support countries that suffer loss and damage from climate-related disasters. Second, the G20. My priority in Bali will be to speak up for countries in the global south that have been battered by the COVID-19 pandemic and the climate emergency and now face crises in food, energy and finance exacerbated by the war in Ukraine and crushing debt. 
I'm pushing G20 leaders to adopt a stimulus package to provide governments in the developing world with the investments and liquidity they need to get through these challenges and speed up debt relief and restructuring. We are also working to alleviate the looming food crisis by extending the Black Sea Grain Initiative for Ukraine grains and by removing obstacles to the export of Russian food and fertilizers. Rice is the crop most affected by the huge increase in fertilizer prices, which obviously has serious implications for the ASEAN region. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, in these turbulent times, regional organizations, including ASEAN, are essential to building global solutions. Our collaboration with ASEAN continues to grow across areas from conflict prevention to climate action, sustainable development, and social protection. And I look forward to building even stronger and more productive relations in the years ahead. I am at your disposal for four questions. Wait a bit. Um, good morning, uh, Mr. Antonio Gutierrez. Yep, uh, I'm Chup Nereza from Radio Frank International in Khmer language. Right. Um, I have a few quick questions regarding to the Asian Human Rights Declaration which adopted in 2010 and 2012 in Cambodia. So, uh, it is a decade and a um, 10 year anniversary of Asian of Asian Human Rights Declaration uh, in 2022. From your perspective, what have you been seeing regarding to the human rights issue in Asian for a decade? And uh, for Cambodia, uh, what do you think? Thank you. Well, the situation is obviously different from country to country. But I would like, first of all, to underline that uh, human rights are economic, social, cultural, political and civic, and you need to see human rights in its broader perspective. We have with ASEAN a cooperation agreement on human rights, and there will be in two weeks' time a meeting with the ASEAN Committee on Human Rights. And of course, as I mentioned yesterday, it is extremely important that human rights are fully respected, economic, social, cultural, political and civic. And indeed, my appeal, and namely my appeal in a country like Cambodia, is for the public space to be open and for uh, human rights defenders uh, and uh, climate activists to be protected and uh, for the cooperation with the civil society to be extended. At the same time, our biggest preoccupation in relation to human rights is, of course, Myanmar. That is where the systematic violations of human rights are, uh, I would say, absolutely unacceptable and causing enormous suffering to the Myanmarese people. Yes, uh, my name is Sarat, from, uh, a journalist Sorry. from uh, Cambodia. So before you start, I'm, I do not see you. Um, Ah, there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just would like to have a question specific about Cambodia. Um, what is your evaluation about the situation of uh, human rights in Cambodia? Because based on the human rights reporters' report about the human rights situation in Cambodia, so the, the civil space like uh, human rights is strict, something like that. So what is your evaluation in general? And uh, did you raise about the political issue and human rights with the Cambodia? Uh, during this meeting? Well, I already answered the question to uh, the, the previous speaker, uh, and as I said, it's important to have uh, a public space, a civic space, uh, that is expanded. It's important for human rights defenders and for um, climate activists uh, to be protected and uh, for the civil society to play uh, a wider role in society. So that was clearly uh, my message, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, we uh, intend to enhance our cooperation with ASEAN in relation to human rights 
and uh, we are hopeful that uh, this cooperation will lead to meaningful improvements. Good morning, sir. My, my name is Rosie, and I am a reporter from Tmai Tmai and Cambodian Nest. I have two questions for you in connection with the uh, Ukraine and Myanmar crisis. So my first question is, uh, what is your expectation uh, of the uh, ASEAN joint like, statement uh, on the uh, Ukraine crisis? And my second question is, yes, on the Ukraine crisis, the uh, crisis in Ukraine. Yes, sir. And my second question is, uh, to what extent would you like to see uh, ASEAN cooperate with the, Uni the United Nations in uh, resolving the crisis in Myanmar? Thank you. Well, in relation to the second question, uh, it is clear that uh, what is very important is that the five-point consensus that we support moves ahead. And uh, I trust the Indonesian presidency that will be uh, dealing with the issue to uh, develop a number of initiatives allowing for the objective that I mentioned to be finally uh, achieved. We need to go back to democracy, to a transition to democracy. We need to release political prisoners. We need to establish an inclusive process. And uh, I'm confident uh, that the Indonesian presidency will be working hard uh, in the next year uh, in that respect. In relation to the Ukraine, uh, basically uh, our position in the United Nations is clear. Uh, what happened in the Ukraine, the invasion of the Ukraine was a violation of the Charter. Uh, was a violation of the territorial integrity of uh, uh, the uh, Ukraine, but at the same time, it is very important to create the conditions for progressively um, dialogue uh, to be reestablished and progressively to start looking into a future where peace will prevail. Not any kind of peace, peace based on the values of the UN Charter and peace based on international law. Hi, good morning, Mr. Gutierrez. Okay. Morning, Mr. Gutierrez. Mei Wong from CNA, Singapore Television Station. What is your response to criticisms that the United Nations? I'm sorry, I don't see your mouse. So... <laughs> what is my? What is your response to criticisms that the United Nations, as well as ASEAN, have failed the Myanmar people? And also regarding the 15-point statement that ASEAN has written up yesterday and endorsed, how do you think that statement is really going to make a real difference on the ground in Myanmar? Thank you. So, uh, the, the second question was the declaration. Hello. Regarding the 15-point statement that ASEAN has come up with to try and find a proper solution in moving forward for ASEAN. Well, first of all, Everybody has failed in relation to Myanmar. The international community as a whole has failed, and the UN is part of the international community. It is dramatic to see the suffering of the Myanmarese people. Now, in relation to the movement forward and ASEAN's movement forward, as I said, I believe that uh, the Indonesian presidency, with whom uh, we have been cooperating with the government of Indonesia very closely in relation to Myanmar, I believe the Indonesian government uh, will be able to push forward the agenda in a positive way and uh, uh, my special envoy uh, is ready to fully cooperate with the, the, Myanmar, with the, the um, ASEAN envoy in order to be able to uh, create the conditions to establish, as I mentioned, uh, the democratic transition to, f to f let the political prisoners go in freedom and to end the dramatic violations of human rights in Myanmar. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. All the best.